Afternoon, everyone. This is Talking Trade Live. That means it's Thursday. It's nearly the weekend. So happy days. Hope you're all well, having a good week. It's actually been good here weather-wise. So um, people are cracking on, which is great. Uh, this week's show is about tools. So really, is it worth spending good money on the different brands at the sort of high end? Or can you get away with the cheap and cheerful, happy shopper ones that more than likely... If you're using here, there and everywhere, it will be fine. But if it's every day, all day, they're not going to last. So please, please send in comments, thoughts. What's your brand? Because this is another thing we'll talk about is obviously if you're stuck with a cordless brand. You've got to stick with it because of the batteries and charger. And helping me discuss this is uh, Joyner Neil up in Bedford. Um, and first of all, welcome, Neil. You're... Um, well, really, your thoughts are, being a joiner, you've got to buy decent gear, which actually costs a bit, because all day, every day, you can't afford for it to keep going bang. Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, the money that we spend on tools, especially as a joiner, it's all about accuracy on your cuts and making sure that you've got the right tool for the right job. Unfortunately, <laughs> with my work, it's always the way that the most expensive tools are the ones that you need. Um you know, for example, I'm running uh, DeWalt FlexVault track saws on Festool guide rails. Would love to get, you know, maybe upgrade onto the Festool system, but just for the cost, it's just so expensive. And considering the rest of my products that I use, the rest of my tools are all DeWalt, I'd rather stay on that platform and just keep using quality tools that they produce to kind of like make sure the job's done to the right standard, really. Well, a good point Tom Helm has just said. Let's go straight into this one because this is a big, big thing, mm. is the warranty. Yeah. Now, you're cheap and cheerfuls. You're not going to get a good warranty. But um, there's what I call mid-range, the DeWalt's, Makita's, Milwaukee's. They've got a lot of these go online and register your tool and get an extra warranty. Yeah. Is that a big thing for you, mate, when you started looking at your tools, a warranty? It is, definitely. And I'll give you an example. I've got the... DeWalt Flexvolt uh, 12 inch mitosaur. And I'm actually on my second one now. The first one I got when it first came out and the battery, the motors inside blew. It turns out there was a fault with the battery pack, the external battery pack that fits onto it that overpowers the motors. So they had these faults with them. So I had to go back. They fixed it free of charge on a goodwill for me. And it had just expired on its three year warranty as well. So out of goodwill, they fixed it for me, got it back. Six months later, it blew again, sent it back. Um, there was a little bit of a hiccup with them getting it repaired because COVID had just hit. So I spent half a year without my mitosaur. And then when I phoned up DeWalt to chase it, they just sent me out a brand new one. Brand new one, brand new packs, like batteries, everything. And I think going with these bigger brands, the more established brands in their, in their market, is definitely worth it with the extended warranties that you get because they do look after their customers because they know that people that use their tools are running them daily in and out. And you need to have that security that if you've just spent six, seven, eight, nine hundred pounds on a microsaw, you don't want to have it break and then find that no one can help you out. And then you've lost that money. It's gone. And that's probably what a job's work in tools that you've just lost. So it's well, definitely. Definitely warranties are the best thing that brands can put on their tools, definitely. The big thing for me is when you're on a job and, I don't know, let, let's take what you do, for example. Um, yeah. Obviously, uh, wood, timber, etc. If you're using, let's say, a skill saw and it's a cheap and cheerful one, but you're in a hurry, you didn't have a lot of money and it goes bang on day two at half ten. The cost involved of your time to go back, try and get a replacement. If not, it's got to be sent away. I think a lot of stuff, um, if you're using it all day, every day, you, you've got, got to spend the money, haven't you? Yeah, you have. Um, you need something that's going to last. You can't just go for cheap budget ranges all the time. It, and again, it depends on the trade, what you're doing, like what I do. If I'm using a skill saw and I've got to just cut some timber down with a straight edge and it's working fine because I haven't got the tool that I would have used on me on the day and then it fails, um, you've then got to look at, right, well, how much did I pay for that? Right, well, that was 200 quid. Have I got 200 quid right now to go buy another one? Which, let's be honest, 
most of the retailers that sell these products like Dewalt, Milwaukee, Bosch, Makita, the prices you get them from them aren't always better as what you would get online. So if your skill saw goes on you and it was 200 quid online, but someone's selling it for 250 in a store, you know, despite the fact that you've got your warranty on it, you haven't got time to send it off and get it back. You need it there and then. So this is another point. Yeah. You know, do you spend 10, 20 percent more in a high street? You know, you've got your, obviously your brand, your tool stations, this world. You then got your independence, but more than likely they're going to be a bit more. And mm. I just wanted to go to a comment of the higher echelons of tools. Patrick Corish, um, invest in the best you can afford makes good sense but listen we all know maffel uh hilti uh festivals up there isn't it um you know aftercare's top notch hilti 16 years out of a battery i mean that's that's incredible but that is it is serious coin and it's only going to be certain trades that are going to be using it all day every day and wanting that precision cut because i would love that gear yeah but i cannot afford it i think the other thing um Sorry, just going through comments. Keep them coming. Erbauer is a range. Now, we're not here to, to obviously say each brand is great or good. It's just interesting to hear comments. Erbauer, um, Richard Notley said, if they had a bigger range, they're pretty good. Um, I think in terms of the lower end, they're pretty strong. Um, if you're using stuff, you know, maybe a few times a day, not all day, though. Mm -hmm. um, you've then got all your stuff like your DeWaltz, Makita's, Matabo is a good, strong brand. Uh, Milwaukee. Um, I don't know if this is true. James Bright said the army use Hilti for a reason, if that is the case. Um, no wonder we got so much debt from government. They're bloody buying Hilti gear all the time. Um, <laughs> they camouflaged as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, if you don't want to be bright red, you're going to be a target. Yeah. I was just looking in, um, in tool stations catalog and I'm just looking at combi drills because, listen, that's probably a tool that most trades would use. There's rumours Sparks occasionally use one of them, but I can't can't confirm that. Now, the the starting price is a Bowker combi drill, two batteries, and a charger, forty four pounds. A, would you look at that as a professional tradesman and run a mile? Yeah, I wouldn't trust that it's going to last for the amount of work that a tradesman's going to use it for, especially if they're on a building site, contracted, fit in, what would it be, like bathrooms, kitchens. I just don't think it'll probably last against the impact that it's going to take on walls and the load on the bits. I just don't think it would last, really. I think you burn it out. But then it, it's that thing, isn't it, of if you – some people have – that thing where they don't always buy the big brands, they're more happy to spend 44 quid on a drill, it die after say six months, but yeah. then they know they've used it, they just go buy another one. So they constantly rotate their gear. But well, that's again, what I'd like to hear from viewers. What are you doing? Are you buying, um, I'm just going as I say through these, you've got uh, Bauker, Works, Einhell, uh, at the cheaper end. You've then got your mid range of DeWalt, um, Hikoki, Bosch, Milwaukee, Makita, uh, Matabo. And then you've got your top end range of Maffel, Hilti and um, Festor. What is everyone doing? Are you buying the cheaper stuff? Fingers crossed it's going to last and then happy to go and buy another cheap one or you go mid range or high end. Um, Raf Krakowak, uh, apologies if I didn't pronounce your name uh, right, but interesting, Matabo is an amazing brand but they do very little marketing over here. Um, mm. it's, I've, I've used it in, in filming I've done when you've done your impact driver, putting screws into hardwoods, so you've had all your brands next to it. Metabo is absolutely incredible, but they don't spend money here. So I don't know if, um, you know, i tell you what we should do. We should do some more videos testing all these things. Um, but oh, yeah. the big question, everyone out there, you've all got your favourite brands, no matter what it is. If you suddenly saw a video and let's say one of the brands came out way on top, would you, and this includes you, Neil, would you then go and buy everything because you've got to buy the same for the batteries and chargers or would you just ignore it? Um, it's a tough one, You've isn't got it? to get the lot, mate. You've got to get yeah. the lot. You've got to 
just get one with a spare uh, battery because it doesn't work like that. Exactly, yeah. Because otherwise, like, you know, I mean, I've got, like I say, I'm Dewalt. I've got a lot of Dewalt stuff and I've got some Bosch products. One of mine is my table saw. I got the, I think it's the GT. In fact, you know, I just brought it out to my phone because I um, needed to find the model number. It was, I got the um, Bosch GTS 10XC, which is like a kind of pro contractor site table saw. And out of all the ones that I looked at, different brands, they kind of like came out on top with, in regards to like the fence and, you know, like the angles and the straightness of it and things like that. So I went for that. But again, it's cordless. So it, no, sorry, it's corded. So it didn't matter about spending the money on it because it wasn't something that was, that I needed to be cross platform compatible with DeWalt. So it works like Metabo. Like Metabo. Yeah. You know, if you're going corded, it doesn't matter what you, I just want to go quickly to a comment. Uh, it's brilliant. Um, Matty Coley for 50 quid. I presume he's referring to the Balker, Balker one that I mentioned. He said for 50 quid, that drill's the best throwaway he's ever bought. So this is the other thing. Mm. You don't expect much for 50 quid from a drill, but you might get a year or two out of it. So, True. you know, maybe my mate worked in a biscuit factory. All biscuits that go into a Harrods box or a Harvey Nichols box or Tesco's, he said all come off the same production line. So, you know, are we paying more because of a brand name? Of course, you're going to get yeah. better ampage. You're going to get better quality. Aftercare is a big thing. But, you know, potentially, are we opening something up here? Let me know, everyone. Is the cheaper stuff you're buying like Matty Coley? Is it lasting? Because if it is, do we need to spend 800 quid on a combi drill on the sort of high-end stuff? Um, I want to go to Sue Stinchcombe's comment because it's quite valid. Um, because we are an awful industry with sustainability. Um, we're very wasteful. And her point is right. Buy good quality that will last because, you know, we're not sustainable and we need to work on that. So, I, you know, it's a, a nice comment. Um, yeah, obviously yeah, you can yeah, it, um, buy something decent. Um, just going through some of the... Um, uh, Jack Taylor has made a good point. Um, Producer George, who's the man in the background that makes all this work and does wonders each week. Can we do a poll on the video to see what people use? Uh, I don't know if it's technically possible. Um, you might as well ask me in Greek. But um, old, uh, George in the background is the living legend that keeps this flowing. So maybe we can put something up. Um, let's go to... Uh, I tell you what, let's look at DIYers. They can get away with using this stuff. But do you think let's buy cheap because we only use it a bit or would you recommend say a client of yours wants to start doing a bit would you recommend yeah. they went up to the next level of say DeWalt yeah I mean I've you know it's good good question actually I've got a friend um my mate Luke he um over lockdown started to do some bits in his house so he started to do like some built-in wardrobes and things like that and he brought like all the products from like a retailer like B&Q and um I lent him a couple of my tools because he does do woodwork and he likes to get involved and do a little bit. And I just said to him, you know, if you're going to set yourself up on a platform, I know, you know, it depends on the person, doesn't it? Some people are like, oh, I just want it to cut 90 degrees. I want it to cut 45. So that's all I want to do. But sometimes when you need that little bit of quality in your cut and it to be straight, so let's face it, some of these chop saws that you buy from some of these retailers, oh, yeah. Yeah. they're like, you know, they're like little Jack Russells. You turn them on and they're instantly like at 3,000 RPM and you just don't get a straight cut. So sometimes it is worth looking at the mid-ranges like your DeWalt's and your Milwaukee's and actually thinking, well, you know, that one in that store was X amount, but if I spend an extra 300 quid, I could get a chop saw that's actually going to last me a lot longer and facing value to money. I think what we're seeing here is precision cutting equipment, chop saws, maybe jigsaws, routers, um, wood stuff. It's worth spending the money to get that good cut, that nice yeah. clean cut. Um, brilliant comments. Really, really good comments here that are going towards the cheaper stuff. Um, Dan Unz, he does heatings and boilers. He's just upgraded to DeWalt, but previously he was using Ryobi. Now, I used Ryobi donkeys years ago before they went cordless and it didn't last long. But he said they took a real good kick in. They're going strong now. And then underneath, Jack Hamilton has used the old Black & Decker drill and impact set. And it's brilliant. 
but as we know, Black & Decker are also DeWalt uh, as the same company, also Stanley Bostitch. So um, are you getting a DeWalt drill, but basically it's um, Black & Decker or vice versa. But listen, it's good to hear that these, these are lasting um, longer because when I first started out, the cheap and cheerful brands did not last. Um, now, let's have a look. Um, there was something about Matt Nelson. Um, this is a really valid point. And this is going to make a big difference to a lot of us. After having his tools nicked, which we've all been through, and it don't yeah. even start me on it, because anyone that nicks some, um, a tradesman's tools it should have their bloody hands cut off, in my opinion. Uh, it is a variable. He chooses mid-range Makita. Now, one thing you get with, and I need to get this right, I think Milwaukee do it, and I'm sure some of the others are starting to, is you get this kind of tracker built in. And someone said that on your phone, you can disable a tool if it's nicked. So I guess that's something to consider because van and tool theft is still horrible in this country. Yeah, it's massive. Right. Um, let's. Uh, there's a few people saying what they're using. Milwaukee. Um, I I started on Milwaukee when I switched over about nine, ten years ago, and I had a um, SDS um, cordless that went in all the footings just to break out crap. And I tell you what. It's still working. Fair play. Really, really good. Um, here we go. Richie Maxwell. Blimey, he's actually, um, he's alive. Uh, you laid any bricks yet, Richie? Um, good to see you, mate. Aldi Middle Isle. Now, I want to bring this up because I know a lot of people that have gone to Aldi, gone for this budget range drill, jigsaw, whatever, and actually it works. Have you ever used anything like that, Neil? Do you know what? I'm not going to lie. I went to Aldi about two weeks ago. No, not not old Aldi. Sorry, Lidl's. I went to Lidl's and I got a uh, Dow jig. It was only six quid. So I thought, you know what? I've been using my biscuit joiner for so long. Before I move up to the Festool Domino joiner, whether it be the XL or the one below it, I can't remember the product names. I thought, you know, what? just give it a try. I've not used it yet, but I might do a little review on it, a little video review on it, just to give a shout, like just to try it to see if a six pound dowling jig will work over something that's more expensive, like a domino joiner. So at the end of the day, it's the same principle, it's the same thing, but yes. just less mechanics. Um, in terms of marking out and, and marking out and guides on it, it looked pretty good. I've not tried it yet; it's in the box actually. But do you know what I mean? I'm I'm always tempted when I go in there. I always have a look. I say to the other half, "Yeah, you go." check out the chicken, get some chicken, I'll go down here. And there's always a few little bits in there that you think, do you know what, that will do. And as it's cheap and you're only going to use it a certain amount of times on a job, it's yeah, always yeah. one tool that you find in those baskets that's going to help you out. Uh, Mike Bradley um, just confirmed the Milwaukee. You're right, it's called One Key. Allows you to track your tools and you can buy small Bluetooth chips to attach to your tools to track them. Uh, the way that everyone's gears getting done by these horrible low life scum uh definitely worth bearing in mind if you're starting out um looks like from his picture mike bradley very interesting picture i'm ex uh rugby player and um he's uh he looks like second row slash blindside but he's passing like a scrum half so fair play to you mike i love that picture mate um I think just as, um, looking at other comments, um, what we're seeing is, listen, plumbers, sparks, um, spreads, you can get tilers, you can get away with your cheaper drills because you're not using them all day, every day. I think your trade, you've got to spend the money because I've got, what's my chop saw, 12 years old? It's a DeWalt one. Um, yeah. Okay, I've never had it serviced because I'm not very good at that sort of thing. But it's a degree and a half out. So when you when you're cutting your skirt into arcs or whatever, it isn't that perfect finish. So this is another question: Do you need to service your expensive tools? And how many people do get their tool serviced? Because um, I tell you what, I should have done is is had it in the front here with me because it is old. Um, <laughs> it's hanging in there. Yeah, it, it weighs it weighs about the same as this van actually. Oh, well, is it a one ten as well? No, 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 240, 240. Um, yes, Richie, you're right. Is it only joiners tools today? We're talking about joiners tools because Neil is a joiner. And also, um, we feel you need to spend the money on um, high-end cutting equipment if that's what you're doing for timber and wood all day. So, brickies, spreads. 
let me know can you lay bricks or polish a wall up with a happy shopper trowel now i got one from wix when was it god long time ago i think it was four pound fifty that's how long ago it was just a simple nine inch trowel and it was all right listen i'm not going to do a massive hit on a huge lid on it but it was all right so spreads and um tylers brickies can you get away um with cheap trowels or are you into marshall town and all the fancy stuff um certainly uh where's he gone um bricky boy up in scotland richie let us know mate what you think um what's your thoughts on hand tools do you think um i tell you what classic example hammer okay so hammer is three quid but yeah. you can also spend 63 quid on one is you it worth it I think it all depends on the weight, the ounce weight that you want, really. I mean, I've got a 20 ounce DeWalt hammer. Um, would love uh, E Swing because they are quite nice. I think the build quality is really good with those. Um, at the end of the day, most people will say a hammer's a hammer. I think as long as you've got the right weight that you need um, to do the job, it doesn't matter what you spend. It will still do the same thing. It's still going to pull nails out. It's still going to send them home. Um, same with drill bits. You could buy. You know, DeWalt drill bits, you can buy Hilti drill bits, you can buy Festool drill bits. They're this all yeah. going to be the oh. same kind of product, unless they're made of titanium, which, or whatever it be, I don't see the real kind of problem or, you know, the difference in buying these different products. And you, we've all seen it, like most of the mid-range brands do a box set and you see it and it's got the same set of bits Drill bits, you know, well, uh, sockets, tell you what, all that kind of thing. All trades people have got one of these. Yeah. Everyone's got them because at any branch of Tool Station or Juicens or any of the suppliers, national and local, they've always got them on special. Now, what are these? Yeah, Posi 2s. If you spend more money and go right up to the expensive ones, are they going to last longer? Have you ever used expensive bits like, um, on, you know, screwdriver bits or or um you know drill bits yeah i mean i've in terms of my drill bits i've used um the dewalt flex torque range have you seen those yes the yeah, flex yeah, torque yeah. range is very different from a normal screwdriver head and you do notice the difference massively you can get a lot more power behind it because i was finding that i was stripping the heads on my impact driver just using a normal um screwdriver bit Yes, and I found that using the new flex torque ranges that have got a thinner neck on them, but the right size head actually work really well. I mean, yeah, fair enough. You know, it sometimes goes back to, sorry to interrupt, mate. It goes back right. to if you're on a job, I've got loads to do today. You don't want drill bits, um, hand tools, power tools going pop or stripping out or whatever, because you've got to stop and leave the job and go and get something else. Yeah. Um, it's uh. So there's something about tool theft which I want to go back to because listen, it's it's horrendous. Yeah. Uh, Mike Charrington van alarm, specifically yeah. designed to prevent tool and van theft. Listen, have a look, guys and girls. Um, yeah. I don't know. Um, I've heard of it. I certainly don't know anything about it. But listen, if it can help us, certainly worth a look. Um, so I think as we've got what about five minutes left, uh, let us know. All <laughs> trades, is it worth spending the money? Because um, I know we're looking at sort of um, carpentry and joiner tools, but we now have seen that we need to spend the money if you're a joiner on getting that cut right. Um, I think other trades, it looks like as if you're using cheaper stuff. I mean, listen, if you say to a spread, go and use a happy shopper trowel, they're going to be uh, absolutely um, all over you because we've all got the trowels that are worn in and worth a fortune. Yeah. Um, let me know, is this as we're coming to an end, is it worth spending the money um on tools in your eyes and put a comment what your uh, trade is so if you're a roofer um are you spending money on an e-swing because you're using that bloody hammer all day long and yes there does seem to be research proving that spending that money helps with things like tennis elbow and and all the rest of it um so uh just uh yeah let us know um i just want to add something quite funny into this if i can find it now i believe You've got to spend the money because you get what you pay for. And um, this is slightly away from tools. But um, anyone that cuts themselves when they're working with me, um, you've got to wear a pepper Pig plaster. Now, 
I got these reduced, as you can see. Don't ask me how they've gone past the sell-by date. It's a bloody plaster. But they're crap. They don't stick. So you've got to go back to your proper Band-Aid. So I'm thinking, my view is, you get what you pay for. Um, let us know what you think. Just sort of wrapping up, um, Neil, uh, apart from your trade, someone coming into the industry, would you, you know, starting out an apprentice or someone switching careers, would you say spend the money or risk it on the cheaper stuff and judging by comments they're actually doing all right these cheaper tools they seem to be yeah nice. um, i mean if someone coming in like new into it and starting out i would say obviously they've probably got a bit of experience working with their you know the master craftsman or whatever using their tools once they've got a feel for what they like um and they're definitely dedicated to it then yeah spend the money on the better quality tools and then if need be you know go for a cheaper budget range if you need to for a certain thing that you're not going to use so much but one question i wanted to throw out to the audience actually was when we buy our tools and we buy these expensive ranges or we buy these lower ranges has anybody had experience of improvements with their tools that are in the budget range by using say better blades so for example by yeah. You know a low-end chop saw but by a fruit um saw blade yeah. Or the yeah, yeah yeah that's a real good one does that improve the performance that has that you know because obviously we can spend low, low money on products on our tools but you can improve their accuracy you could more probably bring them up to a better standard by using a better blade like we've just talked drill bits um you know all those kind of things has that improved their performance with their tools because i guess that's something i think that it has about. The last, the last, say, 10 years, as you've got more and more um, blade and drill bits and, and other, I think you can get away with a slightly cheaper tool, but using a damn good blade or a really decent um, drill bit that's not going to burn out. You remember the old, you had to keep dipping them in a cup of water because they were melting as you were drilling. You know, I think using uh, decent bits on power tools makes a huge difference. Um, yeah. I just want to go back to a comment about... Um, Tools being necked. Uh, Anthony Muzzy, uh, ex-old Bill, used to tell people, and again, have a look at this, everybody. It's, it's going to take you 10 seconds. Um, Immobilize.com. You register all your kit, barcodes, report the theft. When old Bill catches um, the stealer, let's say, uh, with tools, they check on Immobilize and crashes up as nicked. Um, <clears throat> again, worth a quick look because if it takes a few seconds to fill it in or a few minutes, better than um, having it nicked and, and, you know, never seeing it again. Um, well, Roy, love Roy. Uh, Roy Changlio is, as a labourer, I find an extra 50p on a stiffer broom is well worth it. I think you're right, mate. I think, you know, there's no point in um, in um, cutting costs there. Go full hog, top man, get a decent broom. Uh, a bit like trigger off, only fools, no doubt. Uh, I think coming to a conclusion then... Um, I reckon looking at the comments, we've got a split. We've got a split between um, buying cheaper because what people have said is your cheaper tools actually seem to be made better quality and are lasting longer. Um, but also people that are old in the tooth like me, you know, you've used certain brands or a lot of brands and you then got your favorite one. So I think it's an even split this week. Um, I think what you've said, Neil. Your trade is a chippy. You do need to spend a bit more either on the blades or whatever um, or the tools. But generally, other other trades can get away with spending a bit less. Um, so I think that brings it to a close. Thanks ever so much, Neil. Um, this uh, show can be found on as a podcast from Mondays. Um, definitely worth a watch if you want to catch up on anything or uh, send comments in. Uh, please do let us know as well what you would like uh, us to cover as topics. We've done everything. Uh, we've nearly coming up to the year's birthday, uh, April. So let us know what comments you want us to do. We've done a lot, but there's obviously a lot more we can do. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in the background about uh, doing lives with uh, tradesmen and women having um, virtual uh, agreements and disagreements. So watch this space. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. If you do want to... Um, Add Neil um, on your social media. He does a lot of reviews. Um, as he said, he might be doing one. But it's certainly worth watching. I'd be intrigued to see that. 
uh, add me because I'm doing a charity build. I'd love all of your help because it goes to uh, construction industry charity, the Lighthouse Club. Have a great afternoon, all. And um, from what I heard this week, the pubs are opening soon. So happy days. I'll see you in there. <laughs>